Good morning and welcome to another episode of The Angry Astronaut. Once again, appearing sans glasses and again talking about a very serious topic. And that is, if you've read the title of this episode, to advocate for the United Kingdom or for some country that Virgin Orbit has been doing business with. That is to say, getting spaceports established for them to do horizontal launch out of in the future to advocate that one of these companies purchase Virgin Orbit now that they are in bankruptcy, now that they are in reorganizational bankruptcy. I want to emphasize that. This company is not in the process of liquidating all of their resources in order to pay off their bills. They're instead in a process of reorganization. I myself actually worked for a company that went through reorganizational bankruptcy and emerged stronger than ever. So it's not impossible for for a company to emerge from this sort of thing. However, it is obvious that Richard Branson wants to unload this company. Well, given the amount of money that one could pay to own their own launch provider, I think it's a hell of a bargain. And given the amount of money that the UK has already invested in horizontal launch and spaceport Cornwall, I think it's a match made in heaven. But more importantly, I think if the UK doesn't go for this, Australia, Brazil, or Japan very well might. Oh, and also just want to thank everybody so much for what's just happened. I uh, just received my plaque to having reached 100,000 subscribers, such a huge thing for my channel. I've got one last hurrah being planned for you guys for the 100K celebration. I hope you folks enjoy all of that. Please like, please subscribe, please hit those notification bells, and also please consider supporting this channel as I'm going on a couple of trips to Colorado Springs and to Boca Chica to bring you a lot more awesome content. And also, please don't forget that dynamic Kinetics Tour. If you haven't watched those two episodes yet, please do some of the best content I've ever put out. Okay, let's move on to the UK and Virgin Orbit. It is difficult to believe that in only five months, so many things could go so horribly wrong. When this particular video was put together, Virgin Orbit was on top of the world. I have an opportunity to meet the vast majority of these employees. They were so friendly, so professional, so knowledgeable. I had such a high degree of confidence in what they were able to accomplish, and yet none of this went as planned. Instead, I was deeply worried that if anything went wrong with this launch, they would not survive. And Richard Branson, as you can see here, this was the last time, as far as I know, that he was publicly associated with Virgin Orbit at all. Ever since then, he has completely dumped this company and demonstrated no desire whatsoever to support it. Understandably so, because this company has been bleeding cash like crazy because of a number of serious miscalculations. First of all, with their public offering, Virgin Orbit was hoping to get over half a billion dollars in capital. That did not happen. They made less than half of that. And given the fact that they only make about $12 million per launch, Virgin Orbit absolutely had to increase their launch cadence in order to start putting together some decent funding. Unfortunately, they had to spend a lot of money to expand their capabilities, expand manufacturing, add more planes to their fleet, and by spending all of that money, they started hemorrhaging money even faster, and there weren't any investors to stop the bleeding. It was a serious miscalculation based on the amount of money that used to be available for private spaceflight and is no longer. But that doesn't mean that Virgin Orbit is not a viable company. There are people saying that this was never a good business plan, that there aren't enough customers to support it, yada, yada, yada. It simply isn't true. I've had an opportunity to interview a wide variety of customers that Virgin Orbit has secured for future launches. And let me tell you something, the opportunities are literally endless. For example, AAC Clyde Space, which Virgin Orbit sadly was supposed to be deploying a couple of their satellites on their most recent mission, and of course experienced that anomaly. But AAC Clyde Space, 
Chinese had already established an agreement with Virgin Orbit to deploy dozens of their satellites in the future. Now, who are these guys? Well, only the company that built Scotland's first ever satellite, the U-Cube-1. And since then, AAC Clyde Space now manufactures an average of six satellites per month. In other words, enough to support Virgin Orbit by themselves if they were Virgin Orbit's only customer, which of course they're not. As a matter of fact, this company actually supports 40% of all CubeSat missions. Let me say that again. This company supports 40% of all CubeSat missions. They are regarded to have more hardware in space than any other small satellite provider. This is an enormous customer and only one of a huge number of customers that Virgin Orbit had secured for future launches. What's another big customer? Well, how about the UK military? The Prometheus 2 satellites sadly lost during the anomaly were the UK Ministry of Defense's first step in establishing a rapid response capability in low Earth orbit. That is to say, if any UK military satellites were to be incapacitated in some sort of crisis or conflict situation, the UK would be able to quickly deploy replacement satellites to maintain Britain's reconnaissance and surveillance capabilities in low Earth orbit. And it goes way beyond that. Virgin Orbit had a long established relationship with a company called SatRev out of Poland. The Stork 6 was the next installment in this manufacturer's constellation and sadly this was lost as well. But once again we need not be judging Virgin Orbit by different standards than every other launch provider in history. SpaceX lost cargoes. ULA has lost cargoes. Everybody has lost cargoes. That doesn't mean they don't deserve to be in business or they deserve to be treated like poison, which is exactly how Virgin Orbit is being treated right now, which is exactly why this is the time to purchase this company. Prior to declaring Chapter 11 bankruptcy, Virgin Orbit was looking at a purchase price of at least $200 million or more in order to keep them afloat. That is no longer the case. The company is currently valued at about $60 million. In other words, the price of a single Falcon 9 launch. Now, of course, there would probably be other expenses in buying out this company, but still, we're talking about buying an entire launch provider that has a demonstrated history of being able to put satellites into orbit for a song, for the cost of launching a single rocket. Actually, if you compare it to the cost of launching a ULA rocket, it's way less than that one rocket in exchange for an entire launch provider. This is something that countries that do not currently have sovereign launch providers, like the United Kingdom, should be jumping on right away. And if the UK doesn't jump on this golden opportunity, then other countries definitely should. For example, Australia. Only back in September 20th of 2022, Virgin Orbit signed a memorandum of understanding with Wagner Corporation, which is one of Australia's most successful privately owned companies and the proprietor of Toowoomba, Wellcamp Airport and Business Park in Queensland, Australia, with the objective, of course, of setting up a spaceport very much like Spaceport Cornwall. This, of course, is not going to come to fruition if Virgin Orbit completely goes out of business. And keep in mind, Australia has no sovereign launch provider at all. The closest thing they have is Rocket Lab in nearby New Zealand. Now, why is it important for countries to have their own sovereign launch providers, especially now? Well, two very important reasons. Number one, it's expensive to ship satellites over overseas and especially to send the necessary technicians with them in order to ensure that you have a good integration process and a good launch. In addition, many companies, especially in Europe, are becoming particularly focused on just how much of a carbon impact they're having on the environment. Companies are trying to be as green as possible, as I say, especially in Europe, where a lot of satellites are manufactured. Shipping satellites overseas and especially sending 
sending the technicians with them has an impact on the environment that's significantly greater than if you can launch them from your own country. In addition to that, a single Falcon 9 launch accounts for the same amount of carbon as 20 Launcher 1 launches. So a big difference in terms of carbon impact from the rockets themselves as well. Obviously, Falcon 9 carries a much bigger payload, but that's not the point. The point is how much of a carbon impact is every customer having on the environment. And no matter which way you slice it, if you can launch a satellite from your own country using a small rocket, it's going to have a smaller overall impact. Now, this isn't getting involved in the whole argument as to whether or not global warming is real or anything like that. As any of you who have followed my content know, I'm not making any sort of judgments on that because I'm not a climatologist and this is not a channel dedicated to that particular topic. I'm simply saying that's what Europe is focused on right now. They want green companies and the best way to be green is to have your own sovereign launch provider and to launch from your own country. The UK still does not have this capability. They are going to have the capability to launch from Saxavord soon and I'm a big fan of Skyrora and Orbex based out of Scotland but neither of these companies are sovereign UK companies. Orbex is largely owned by Danish concerns and Skyrora is largely owned by Ukrainian investors. Virgin Orbit could be a 100% British operation. But the opportunities go even further than that because there were other countries that had already invested a substantial amount of money in bringing Virgin Orbit and Horizontal Launch to their nation. For example, Japan. A company called All Nippon Airways and also Oita Airport had invested millions of dollars in bringing Virgin Orbit to Japan and establishing, yes you guessed it, another spaceport with an agreement to fly Launcher 1 at least 20 times out of Oita Spaceport in Kyushu, and one of the objectives was to bring more tourism to the area as well. This region of Kyushu is rich in hot springs and other tourist attractions, and bringing spaceflight to this area was supposed to be a big boon for this region as well. Cornwall is not the only region at risk as a result of this bankruptcy. Also, Brazil has a similar problem. In the summer of 2022, the Brazilian Space Agency and Brazilian Air Force signed a contract with Virgin Orbit to establish commercial launch services at the Alcantara Launch Center on Brazil's northern coast. This is only a couple of degrees away from the equator, a location that makes it one of only a few continental spaceports in the world capable of reaching any orbital inclination. If Japan or Australia doesn't buy Virgin Orbit, Brazil certainly should, then they would have their own sovereign launch capability. Somebody needs to jump on this opportunity. Honestly, I'm surprised that nobody has already. Now, in my opinion, since Cornwall and the UK have invested the most time and the most money in establishing a spaceport that's already licensed and open for business, Britain should be the one to make this purchase. And I actually went on the air this morning in the UK with Cornwall's Pirate FM radio to express my opinions. Now, to be clear, I don't believe that the people of Cornwall, the Cornish taxpayers, that is, should have to invest any more money in particular. The Cornish Council should not have to invest any more local funding in making this happen. This is a purchase that will benefit the entire United Kingdom. It will bring the UK opportunities not only in Europe, but also in Japan, Australia, Brazil, across the planet. Something that Britain does not currently possess and frankly has never possessed. Now is the time to take action. The UK Space Agency and the British government certainly has the funding to offer at least incentives, tax breaks, something to an investor that would be willing to pick up Virgin Orbit, especially for the kind of price we're talking about right now. Virgin Orbit has accomplished too much to become a sad story in the history of spaceflight. There are too many opportunities 
opportunities in the near and distant future for this company, not least of which is the potential of interplanetary travel as well. Virgin Orbit has been developing a third stage for Launcher 1, complete with ion engines. And by the way, this is a technology that could also be sold to other customers in the future, creating an entirely new revenue stream for the company. But they would have the capability to launch interplanetary probes. And indeed, this would allow Britain the opportunity, given the fact that an agreement was already made with a consortium of Polish companies and universities to launch the first ever commercial interplanetary mission in human history. What a huge step this would be for Britain to take. From a country that hasn't launched anything into orbit for over half a century to the first country to launch a commercial interplanetary mission to Mars. This is not some kind of dream. This is not some sort of madcap scheme or idea here. This is something that could happen tomorrow if the UK Space Agency and UK investors take action immediately. Please like, please subscribe, hit those notification bells, and thanks very much for watching. And as always, stay angry about space.